A lot of you tell me that you want to make your training more engaging, but what's stopping you is that you have a strict corporate template to follow. So to show you that templates don't have to be a showstopper, in this video, I'm going to take the most boring ass corporate template I can find and the least exciting topic I can think of, and we're going to merge these dull ingredients together to make an engaging and effective e-learning baby. So here's my fictional example. My client is a bank and when people want to borrow money from them, they submit a whole bunch of documentation. The problem is there's a lot of mistakes and inconsistencies in those documents and these get missed by the bank's employees so the loans get approved when they shouldn't be. I know your, your eyes are glazing over right now but it's supposed to be boring. Stay with me. So I've got to come up with a way to help employees better evaluate loan applications by using this, the dullest storyline template in the world. So before I get to the fun stuff and gamify this, the first thing I need to do is I need to operationalize the learning objective. Typically on a project like this, I'll be given learning objectives like loan officers will know the process for evaluating an application and be familiar with all policies. But it's not enough to know these things, they have to actually do it. So let's transform these into something that's measurable and observable. So when given a form, they'll find every single mistake. And the reason why they don't do this right now is because they have too many to do in too little time so they miss some mistakes. So we have to train them to do this in 60 seconds. This matters a lot because in my process, my learning objective dictates the kinds of activities I give the learners. So in the end, we're not gonna check if they know it, we're gonna check if they do it. Now onto the fun stuff. My very standard template that I'm working with has all the usual slides which fall broadly into two categories. There's different ways of giving the learner information, text, video, click and reveal, pictures, and ways of testing the learner, drag and drop, multiple choice, etc. And we've got these structural things like a menu and titles. So that's typical, but there's nothing in the template that says I have to do these things in order, that is, give them information and then test them. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to reverse this model. So the training is going to start by testing them. So here's the application and I tell them to click on this supporting document and I actually show them that there's an inconsistency here with the spelling of the name. They click on this and then they're asked to find the next mistake by themselves. Bravo, wonderful, you did it. So we click on the next document, which is the business plan. This guy says he's starting a donut shop, but the document says a deli. So there's the mistake. And I keep going like this, gradually adding more parts to the form and more supporting documents. So they're active the whole time. And then I'm gonna give them another case to practice with. And this time I cut them loose. There's no guidance at all. The tutorial is over. Now in each case, I'm asking them to find a certain number of mistakes and I'm not gonna move forward until they do. There's no submit button and the continue button only becomes available when they've found all the mistakes. So right now there's no way for them to fail. The trainee is just gonna wait until they find all the mistakes. We're in forced success mode. They get a little bit more practice and eventually we do take away the forced success. So now they're not being shown how many mistakes there are, just like in real life. So they have to check everything and submit when they think it's all good. So here it is possible to miss a mistake and not get a perfect score. But notice how we handle failure in this program. When the learner falls short, they just get more practice until they get enough in a row with a high enough score to satisfy the learning objective. So if you fail, we don't just give you the answer and move you on to something harder. You get to practice again, maybe with some extra tips until you do pass. And when you do master a level, we layer in more complexity. We have these special policies here that now you have to take into account. So maybe you have to refuse 100 K loans to people under 25, or maybe there's some blacklisted people that you have to look out for. And of course, eventually we will add in the time factor where you have to do it in less and less time. We do this because it's relevant to the real world context and it's the reason why people are failing right now. But all this happens only when you're ready for it and you've mastered everything that's come before. So each learner goes through a number of tries that's right for them based on how quickly they pick this up. If you need it, you can practice a lot, but if you're great, we're not gonna bother you with more practice than what you need. Okay, so now let's talk about incentives and motivation. Maybe your template doesn't have scores or badges or anything you can use to celebrate and reward the learner, but that's okay, you don't need it because you're already keeping the learner active on a relevant task at exactly the right level of challenge for them. Instead of extrinsic rewards, the motivation here comes from that intrinsic sense of progression and accomplishment. So what I would add here for encouragement and celebration as much as the template allows it is to show them their progress as clearly as possible. So I'd make sure that I show them where they stand and every time they master a tier, I would make a point of returning them to the menu so they can see the next level unlocking and at least get a sense of progression that way. 
So on the surface, this program looks as dull as the rest, so you're keeping the template enforcers happy, but under the hood, you've leveraged gamification so that your program has real-world impact and learners actually enjoy it. Despite this, some of you might say, well, this isn't gamified, it's just a simulation of what they're doing in real life. You're right, it absolutely is a simulation, but what's gamified about it is how we're getting them to the point where they can perform the task with ease. We are immediately giving them a goal and letting them attempt it instead of making them listen to theory and hope that it translates into real world skill. That's how games teach and that's the most important part we need to take from games and implement into training, not the look and feel. Besides, there already are games out there where you perform exactly this task. Papers, Please is a fantastic example where the whole gameplay is about checking documentation and it's been played by millions who didn't have to. And of course, there's countless spot the difference types of games out there as well. So no matter how tedious a task may seem, you don't inject the fun into it, you take the fun that's already in there and you make it more salient. And if you're in template hell and you want the step-by-step -step method to making fun e-learning programs that actually move the needle, check out the Effective Gamification Framework, which is my signature program for e-learning designers. So check that out in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.